yesterday I mentioned, well, maybe the Browns would, would dip their toe in the veteran defensive tackle waters once again. They did, obviously, this offseason by signing Dalvin Tomlinson. They also brought in Maurice Hurst yep. from, from San Francisco. Tristan Hill from the Cowboys. And Tristan Hill from the Cowboys, right. Uh, I mentioned in Dominican Sue yesterday, You both you and, and Tyvis made the point you think he will probably uh, not want to sign until camp's over. He's had that, you know, he's done that the last few years. There are some other veteran names. Ioannidis was – was like a pro bowler as recently as 2021. I was campaigning for the Browns to sign Ioannidis at the start of free agency. Yeah. And he has indicated he doesn't want to come into any team until at least midway through camp. Yeah, and maybe all those guys feel that way. Uh, Listen, Perry on Winfrey wasn't a lock to make the roster. So I don't think the Browns have to bring in another defensive tackle. Do you think they should? No, and Mikey sent this out. This morning, right when he sent out, my first yeah. thought was, "Well, Perrin wasn't going to make this team anyway." That's why I don't understand why he was. Still, why, why was he here? He wasn't going to make this team. Are but, you so certain? I'm f- based on. I mean, I field? haven't. I haven't had anyone in the organization tell yeah. me he wasn't going to make it. But just just watching it, his production level, watching how many problems there's been with this other off field incident, right. I couldn't understand why. They I didn't thought cut he him. had a chance because they have nobody, no short things. Here's why he had a chance. Zach Jackson, my partner at the Athletic, yeah. made a fantastic observation that frankly I didn't see so we we had the opportunity to watch some film of Jim Schwartz's past defenses in Philly yeah and Zach made the observation if you look at the I think it was the the right defensive tackle had the exact same frame as Perrion like it was identical to Perrion Mm -hmm. so that's why I guess he would have had a chance I don't I I didn't think he was going to make this team I think we talked about it over the whole yeah. offseason. I didn't think he was going to make it. So, therefore, now, do, if you need a camp body, okay, fine. If you need someone for, for reps for the summer heat, you want to rotate guys in, okay, then go ahead and sign someone. But I don't know that necessarily anyone that they sign, they have any intention of keeping to make this team because I didn't think Perrion was going to make this team anyway. Gee, I, I thought, well, you look you look at Perrion Winfrey, you look at just, if you strip away all the other stuff, you look at his, his, his physical attributes as a defensive lineman, He's more linear. He's more streamlined. He's more of a smaller pass rush type defensive end. If you go back and watch the All-22 on Perrion Winfrey, he struggles at the point of attack when it comes to double teams and taking up double teams. However, he's playing more constricted in a traditional one technique and or, or, or three technique. They're going to be a little wider in Jim Schwartz's defense. And one thing he can do is is – what they call, you know, changing the line of scrimmage. Like they want guys that can penetrate up field, get up field, and cause a little bit of havoc. That's pretty much what the, his best trait is. Is he going to be a run stopper? Not really. He struggled mightily. You go back and look at the scores, you can see it on there in the film. But I thought he had an opportunity to be a part of the defense, and that's why they did keep him around after the last episode, right? Um, I thought they were going to give him one more opportunity because of the fact that. They're like, okay, he fits better than Tommy Togiai. I think Jordan Elliott could play in his defense. He's, he's, he's a guy that gets upfield as well. And, and they like this type of player coming in. He showed some bright spots last year, but um, I think he could have made a team. I think he would have been a rotational guy, but they knew this too. This, this is the reason they brought in Tristan Hill. It's the reason they brought in Research. It was the reason why they got Thomas in. And you can actually kick down Zedaria Smith and put him at three technique on pass rush downs too. Mm-hmm. So you know they got they got enough bodies. I think they'll they'll be all right in, in the middle. I, I don't think you would ever ha- you could ever have enough good players in in a rotation on the defensive line. Uh, and Dominic and Sue could still help a team. Uh, and I, I, if I, I guess I at this point, if they were going to bring in any of those guys. It's going to happen later in camp. Yeah. After they see, you know, we talked maybe about they, maybe they get through camp and realize they still have a need there. Right. Or there's yeah. an injury because right now Dalvin Tomlinson is the only sure starter sure. in the position. Right. Yeah. Maurice Hurst was good in San Francisco his first two years, but he hasn't played for two years. Right. Uh, Hill is, you know, more of a backup type player. Togi, I think we all agree that guy's probably going to get cut. Dillard's. Not, yeah. 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 Coffins. He's out. Yeah, he's he's gone. <laughs> so you know, is this the year? As G says, maybe Jordan Elliott fits Schwartz's system, and maybe Elliott finally has a decent year. He's been mostly a non-factor yeah. in his years here in Cleveland. So, by the way, yeah. um, signing like finding a defensive tackle 
like it's hard. Yeah, that is hard. Yeah. Is yeah. like it's it, like when we talk about hit or miss. Man, it's hard. Like I, you don't like you could draft a guy top five, top ten. You draft him in the sixth round. It is so hard to predict whether or not these guys are going to come in and be anything. It's just tough. Yeah. I was reading a column. I actually read two columns in the Athletic this morning. Uh, oh, I, read, wow. I read Zach Meisel's column this morning about the trade deadline, and I read uh, the AFC North Whip Around mm-hmm. column. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the AFC North Whip Around column in the Athletic that came out this morning, each of the four beat reporters for the AFC North was asked the question: Who is the most important? player who can the team who can the each team least afford to lose besides the quarterback yeah mm-hmm. and the reason I bring it this up not because of the of Zach Jackson's answer about the Browns but it's the Bengals answer to the point in defensive tackle that um, the Bengals beat reporter who is who can I think of who it is right now Paul, Paul Daner yeah is that the guy yeah um, he mentioned DJ reader mm-hmm. who is the Bengals no I mean they run a Four three, but he's their key guy at defensive mm-hmm. tackle, and he made the point that and and we've seen this. I've seen it. Like if you're not watching the Bengals regularly, you're not going to notice. Right. You know, we notice the Browns' defensive tackles because we watch them all the time, and I watch the Bengals all the time. Right. But I don't know the defensive tackles that well besides Aaron Donald on any other team because mm-hmm. I'm not watching them carefully. Cam Hayward. Cam, right, Cam Hayward. Yeah, yeah. But they mm-hmm. made. But he made the point because you wouldn't think that a defensive tackle would be the most important guy besides the quarterback or the the guy that would hurt the team the most, but. If you've looked at the Bengals the last three years, when DJ Reader has played, their defense has been borderline excellent. Mm-hmm. When he's not played, they've been average to below average. Yeah. That's a big difference because he is takes up two guys on that line, and you know that's what you're hoping uh, with Tomlinson with the Browns. Go ahead, I actually Mike. disagree with you guys on this one. I think they do need to bring in another body. And to your point, outside of Tomlinson, yeah. I don't trust anyone else in that defensive tackle room. But I'm not sure that the guys in free agency at this point are all that good at short and, things either. And I'm not saying anyone's a surefire lock. Right. But I want as many guys in there who I think could potentially be that second, third, fourth guy to weed out whoever I know for sure isn't. And I know that's you know, icing on the cake, maybe an extra over-the-top luxury to have. But Mo Hurst hasn't been healthy long enough. Tristan Hill hasn't been healthy long enough. Jordan Elliott hasn't been good long enough. Tokyo is, who knows? Probably hasn't been good at all. Siaki Ika is a rookie who's never yeah. played in the NFL, and he's going to have to have an adjustment going from the Big the Big 12 at Baylor yeah. to the NFL. I just don't feel confident in that group outside of Tomlinson that they have a guy that you can count on. I don't Maybe not week in, week out, but for at least 70% of the season to be there as a stalwart, God forbid Tomlinson goes down. I would bring someone in, especially a veteran, considering how young the rest of that room is. I don't disagree with most of what you just said, but did, per- did you really have that much confidence in Perry on Winfrey? No, but even before Winfrey like the left, guys I had that, a topic. Right, but the the boy, guys that are you, available. But you thought they needed somebody else anyway. I had a topic saying? for next week saying, do you actually trust this defensive tackle room yeah. before yeah. any of this Winfrey yeah. stuff went on? No, so I this could, just exaggerates, or not exaggerates, but this accelerates my thinking that they need a second D tackle. I mean, the, some of the guys on that list are better than Perry on Winfrey right now. Yeah. Right. So why, why didn't why weren't they here anyway? You know that's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. know that that cutting Winfrey really has that much of a change because no, those guys were already better. I think better, Mike's so. point is he thought he already thought they needed. It yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I was gonna I was gonna yeah. say that regardless of what happened to Winfrey before right. any of this stuff happened, I was gonna ask you guys next week. Hey, yeah. are you confident hey, I, in this defensive tackle room to begin? I with? I, I think bringing in the de- defensive tackle would make some sense. I, I I don't know. It's a huge deal. I also think that if they brought one of those guys, if they were you're a couple of weeks into camp and it's looking like none of these guys are legit starters and you feel like Sue that Sue has been a guy who's waiting for a team that's good. Yeah. And we don't know that the Browns are going to He ain't going to sign until October. No. Right. Like, that's yeah. what he did last now, year. Now, some of these other guys on there, I don't know how good they are at this point. Right. Uh, and also, I think when you're doing team building exercises, at some point, the GM and the scouting department has to hit on guys. Like, you yeah. can't just have free agents like right as, as much as we would like to like somebody that you drafted whether it's I- I- Ika whether it's yeah. Tommy Tokyo whether it's Jordan gotta Elliott, somebody got to do something otherwise you got to lose your job yeah. speaking of which if you're signing ahead. starting yeah. free agents it's because you blew the draft yes. that's right so 